Well, hello, interested viewer. The animation of this cool fly-through through this fantastic polar wonderland you just saw was made completely procedurally with Blender geometry nodes for the November 2022 activity. In this time-lapse making of video, I will just talk over the fast-moving things on screen and explain things as they develop. Naturally, I cannot go too much into detail but rather talk about my thought process behind what I am doing and basic ideas and design principles. Just a disclaimer before we start. November is a fun activity and the whole thing was made just for fun. There are way better and faster and especially easier ways to make an artwork with a landscape like this. But the level of control you get over everything when doing it procedural is just amazing. So, there are a lot of things to learn along the way, let's get right into it. And just for your interest, put in a bit more work and cleaned up the notes of the project this video ends with. And you can get it on my Gumroad, link is in the video description, of course. You have to start somewhere. So as a starting point, I added a simple grid to block in the ocean. It will get replaced by a volume, namely a cube later on. A second grid will act as base to instance all the icebergs on. Splitting up the position coordinates allows you to distort the otherwise flat plane in one direction or more. Now I spread some points over the randomly displaced plane. Instance a simple cube on it, use a rather low density of points and we already have a basic natural distribution of icebergs. Of course we need to shape these ice cubes into icebergs now. Random scaling of the cubes with a stretched out C value gives the heap of cubes a towering look. Blender 3.4 introduced the mesh to volume node, realizing the cube instances, turning them to a volume and then right back into a mesh turns the cubes into a smoothed out subdivided cluster that looks more like icebergs would grow. Sorting and grouping nodes every now and then is always a good idea. And then you can watch me find out you need to use a vector math and not normal math to displace your meshes. I'm so clever I find out about this almost every third project or so. Using the Realize Instances node before the Mesh to Volume node turns all the instances into one giant blob that looks even better than all the single blobby blobs. The Volume to Mesh node is a very cool addition to Blender 3.4. Another cool addition to the Blender 3.4 geometry nodes is of course the node preview. This is so awesome. This makes visualizing what you're doing while for example shaping this volume blob mesh into yet another form so much easier. A wobbity blobbity. And now we jump to the procedural shader of all the objects. The ocean is a simple cube with a few volume shaders. Please note those go into the volume socket of the material output and not the surface socket. A bright cold blue volume absorption shader mixed with a little bit of a darker blue volume scatter gives a nice ice cold arctic feel already. Using generated texture coordinates works with meshes generated in geometry nodes as well. The separated Z coordinate can be used as a linear gradient to make the water murkier the deeper it gets by controlling the density of the volume scatter node with it. The 
The Iceberg Shader is a Voronoi texture for the cracked ice look mixed along the C coordinate with a noise texture. All this is used for the bump map. Stretching the noise texture looked more like ice. Jumping back to the ocean shader. For the surface I use a glass shader with a noise texture as bump mixed with a transparent shader. I try various options from the light path node as mix factor between the two, then decide to eyeball it to find a good value between reflective surface and murky depth of the ocean. To better get the generated coordinates of single objects and not the whole geometry nodes object, you need to separate the bounding box of the mesh and store the position of it as a named attribute. As it is called named attribute already, give it a name and you can use it in shader nodes with the attribute node. After quite some back and forth, I found out I want the position coordinates of the generated iceberg blob divided by the max value of the bounding box. To get normalized values from 0 to 1 to have something easier to work with for the mask along the C axis of the iceberg block that mixes between the different ice types. Some more fine tuning on the ocean and the ice shader and then also on the world shader. To get a nice glow made with a gradient mixing between a new color and the world shader to rise up from the horizon. Back in geometry nodes, I randomly delete a few of the cubes making up the icebergs. This made the remaining icebergs look more massive. And some more fine tuning and turning the sun around to see where it fits in the sky. Cleaning up the node makes room to work on the curve that will soon be the tunnel through the ice. Once the curve is a pipe-like mesh, it can be cut out from the iceberg blob after all the instances are turned into a mesh by using a boolean operation. Carving an ice cave is fun and looks cool already. Fine-tuning the Bissier segment for a moment, making a work copy makes it easy to revert in case you screw up. I can tell you I only do this for November. Controlling curves with value sliders is a pain in the ass. If it weren't for November, I would just add a curve in object mode, go into edit mode and model around on the curve there, or maybe draw a curve and then import the curve geometry into geometry nodes and not this painful way of working with curves. To have a bit more visual interest, I now start working on smaller ice cubes that are floating in the Arctic Ocean. Using a circle to distribute the points on frees me from having to remove points again later on to turn everything into a circular form. Reusing stuff you already did is always a good idea. So I just reused the random scaling from the icebergs to randomly scale the small floating ice cubes.
After a bit of more tweaking, these ice sticks now look more like floating sheets of ice. Again, turning these meshes into a volume and back to mesh quickly carves off all these very sharp angles and turns it into a more natural form. Submerging the ice blobs into the ice cold water shader looks pretty cool if I may say so. Subdividing for more geometry and then displacing the floating ice sheets gives them a more natural look. Smooth shading on top and, and we have finished ice floaties. Combining objects and scaling them together makes them fit for the loop. More and more fine tuning and it's quite fun to work on the carved in ice cave by just pulling a few sliders and see it all appear in front of your eyes in geometry nodes. As mentioned before, reducing what is already there is always speeding things up. So I take the floaties and just duplicate the whole node setup. Change around some important seed values to give them a different look and especially make them flatter on top. Adding a new material based on a glass shader lets you see through to what I'm about to do. After some more fiddling and shaping of the floaties in both geometry nodes and in the shader, we have our transparent floating sheets of ice in the scene already. Again, exporting some mapping information from geometry nodes into the shader editor helps with mapping the noise texture and a gradient along the c-axis to distribute various roughness values on the glass shader. The Voronoi texture on the volume scatter is supposed to make small air bubbles within the eyes. We'll see how this turns out. And then I start working on the animation for a long, long while. I add a curve to put the camera on, constrain the camera to the curve, work on the form of the curve to define the camera movement. And I just decided against using geometry nodes for this curve or I would never have finished this. And I think it's fair, it's, it's not part of the object I want to depict with geometry nodes. Plugging in a transformed geometry node right before the geometry output, moving around the complete geometry and joining it with the geometry before moving it makes it easy to perfectly loop everything. Looking around and what can I say? It looks like an ice cave. And what do you know? More subdivisions make 3D meshes look better. Then a lot of painstaking fiddling happens to make both the movement of the animation loop and of course the waves on the ocean should also be in sync. Then I tried putting mist into the ice cave, but somehow this didn't work out, so I kept it out. Adding a noisy bump to the transparent eyes refracts the light in interesting ways and leads to more visual interest on the otherwise way too smooth eyes. So it's about time to hit that nice render button and see what happens. To make it look better I use the usual suspects of lens distortion and a glare node and my custom made node group for RGB splits in a subtle way, 
that RGB split node group is available on my Gumroad and on this very channel I have a tutorial that explains in detail how to do it yourself and learn something while following the tutorial. That is a great next watch once you're done watching this video. After that I copied the whole geometry four times and placed it with the same distance for the looping part of the video. Lots of fine tuning, lots of rendering, changing small things, rendering again and so on. So I stopped recording as all these renders take so long. So remember the Blender project with the geometry node setup for this whole scene is available for free on my Gumroad. The link is in the video description. Now I can only say I thank you a lot for your interest. Leave a like, leave a comment, follow the channel, look around the channel for more interesting tutorials and art. And one last thing, the original recording has a length of 3 hours, 41 minutes and 33 seconds. This is a very time-lapsed version. And now I'm gone. See you on the other side. TG out.